<clears throat> hey everybody, Dr. Rick here. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable week to this point. Hope you had a great day. Uh, look, I'm going to talk to you for a minute. and I'm trying not to be too long, uh, but I want to talk with you about something that I'm really, 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 truly passionate about. And I want to remind you before I get started that we are having fundraising for the work we do at the Odyssey Project across many different spectrums and interests within the community, but especially the Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative, which is focused on uh, the proper socialization and preparation and empowerment of young Black males to perform at the highest level of manhood. And that's what I want to talk with you about today uh, is how we define manhood and why the term has become so ambiguous and difficult to nail down and why it's important to nail it down. And one of the things that we focus on in the Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative is nailing down and defining manhood uh, for young black boys and iterating the importance of executing the principles and characteristics of manhood. You know, uh, beating one's chest and declaring oneself a king or a head or a leader does not qualify someone to be a man in the sense of manhood. We're not talking about being a male. We're talking about being a man in the unique definition of what it means to be representative of the role in manhood. And I think that uh, because number one, uh, the absence of so many men uh, without a true clarity and the broadening definition as presented by a lost society, we now find ourselves sort of at uh, odds about what we classify or categorize or define as manhood. Uh, another problem is that there has been a constant rise in the commodification of black men. In other words, the sole focus is on how much money is in his bank account. And those who, of us who are doing quite well have come to believe that our money makes us men. Money is simply tools used by different people in a variety of ways. It's not the money that makes the man, it's what the man does with the money. And that's still only a part of manhood. Some weeks ago, I did a series, the five Ps of manhood. I'm gonna talk about the five Ps real briefly, but there's one area I really wanna talk about because I think it's at the core and of why we have so many problems in the community, in the home, uh, and more. Uh, there are five Ps. I'm gonna give them to you real quickly. I'm gonna break them down real fast and then I'm gonna talk about one in specific. The first P is for protector. A man, before he becomes a provider, should be a protector. You know why? Because that creates the environment under which the woman can rise and do what she is capable of doing at the most exceptional level because there's a comfort of safety that comes with his protection. The children are protected so they can develop without fear. They can develop without trepidation. They can develop without uh, the concern of what may come at them because it must first come through him. Next, there is the provider. Now, this is a term that's often misapplied, misused, misunderstood. A provider is so much more than the person who brings the paycheck home on payday. Yes, he's responsible for providing a roof. He's responsible for providing food. He's responsible for a lot of these things. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with the woman assisting him. Um, if you are a, a person of Abrahamic faith, whether it be Islam, whether it be uh, Judaism, or whether it be Christianity, 
uh, the Proverbs 31 woman was getting that paper and she was using that paper in the home. It did not disqualify the man because she was a contributor to the reason why he was accepted at the gate. So his status was tied to her and it wasn't because she was at home doing, keeping the babies and all that, which is still important work. Uh, women do work no matter where they are at doing it. And I think we have to understand that while we are not the same, we are equally important uh, to relationships. I don't believe one person is more important than the other because the roles are different. I don't believe just because a man might bring all the paper home that he somehow has the right to do some things that the woman doesn't have to do. I don't buy into that. But, but, but when you commodify a man and make him feel his importance is in his money and he's getting that paper, you have to understand a lot of times it's going to come with him being beside himself. But see, that's because, again, we don't have the elders to hold it down and to check him and put him in his place. We've got everybody running wild. We got too many rogues and that needs to be dealt with. But again, he's a provider, but what does he provide? If, if it's got to be more than just money, what is he providing that money can't provide? He's providing, again, protection, which is the first thing. He's providing leadership. He's providing advice. He's providing uh, a covering physically and spiritually. He is a source and that's so important. Even when you start to talk about the word father in uh, the Hebrew, Abba means source. He is the source. Now the source is, is important to understand because what the source creates, the source must sustain. Thank you, Dr. Miles Monroe. Uh, the source creates, but then the source sustains. So he is a sustainer. But then after he is a protector, after he is a provider, he is then what? A promoter. Most people miss that. A real man in the home isn't beating his chest about how awesome he is. And he isn't using his family as a prop to make himself look good. He is the one promoting his family. He is the one building his family up. He's the one talking his family up. He is the one creating opportunities for his family. He's the one saying, have you seen my son? Uh, he's the one saying, have you checked out my daughter? He's the one saying, my wife is awesome doing this. Have you checked this out? Have you did this? Have you read her book? Have you did this? All of these different things. He's lifting up and giving place to the people in the house, to the people that he is responsible for. He is sure enough and confident enough in himself that he doesn't have to feel threatened by his family's growth. He is a promoter. Fourth is he's a priest. He is a priest. And, 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 and no matter what faith you practice, if at all, if you believe in a divine power, if you believe in a higher source, then that needs to be a priest in the house. I'm not talking, and, and don't get me wrong, women pray, women meditate, women connect with God, but it's in a different way. There's something about the spiritual covering of a man who understands how to execute and carry out his priesthood. That's the one I want to come back to you on. And finally, he is a prophet. I don't mean that in the religious sense. I don't mean that in the in, in, in the sense of any type of clairvoyancy. I mean that in the sense of what he speaks to his family, for his family, and over his family. He is a prophet. He speaks positivity. He speaks power. He speaks edification. He speaks execution. He speaks uh, standards and character. He speaks. We need our men to be able to speak power in the home. Uh, let's go back to priest. See, there is a spiritual warfare going on. I'm not talking again in any religious sense. I'm talking specifically about understanding that things go beyond what you can see from a mental, emotional, and a psychological level. Things are happening on a spiritual level consistently. And because we don't understand that, we lose so often. And here's the thing. A woman is in the home and she's praying. Her prayer is different. Her prayer is passionate. She's praying for everything and everybody. She's talking to God and she's putting in that work and she may pray for an hour. 
the man's communication with God is different. It's he understands what he needs to do. So his prayer is that first of all, he be in a position to do everything that's needed, that everything be covered, that everything be taken away, that all of the stress be removed from the home, all of the tension be removed from the home. All of the things that are coming against the family spiritually be rebuked and pushed back out and that be that he be able to defend his family from spiritual assault. He is a priest. He is speaking power into the lives of each person in that house. He is sitting up in divine conversation with God to sit up and say, this is what's going on and this is what has to happen. I am standing with you. You put me here. Now I need you to help me deliver. I need you to help me fulfill. I need, to, I need you to help me. We have a problem, people. The spiritual warfare that is right now in fact a problem and has been for decades focused on removing the man from the home is simultaneously snatching the priests out of the home and that's a problem because when the priest is not in the home the, those in the home are uncovered those in the home are left vulnerable those in the home are put in a situation in which things that don't mean them any good have access to them. We need our priests in the home. We need men who know how to do more than earn a paycheck in the home. We need men who understand the power of standing over and guarding. We need men who, uh, I mean, a, a, a man is so much more, you, you got a man when well, he know how, knows how to protect him. I heard someone say once that unfortunately most people who have good men covering them won't really know the depth of what they have until the man is removed. Because see, a good man will stand between danger and his wife and children. A real man will stand between all that's coming at the house and it will have to go through him and so uh, much of what's coming doesn't even hit who's in the house why because it's hitting him and then he won't even talk about it he won't even tell you how bad of a day why he's protecting you from the strain and the stress he carries it in his spirit he carries it with him we need more priests in the house when I'm teaching young boys when I'm teaching young men it's yes you need to know how to develop and build wealth you need to know how to get your paper straight you need to know how to be able to generate an income that will allow you to support a family but let me tell you something you need to know how to cover your family you need to know how to protect you got to be willing to get out there and put yourself between anything that may bring harm bring harm to your family let me tell you it's some dirty people out there some snakes out there that's looking for unprotected women and while i'm saying this women you better learn how to stay under the cover As powerful as you are and as strong as you are and as awesome as you are, there are places where you're vulnerable. And when that vulnerability is exploited, it comes followed by nothing but destruction and chaos. We need priests in the home. We need protectors in the home. We need providers in the home. We need promoters in the home. We need prophets in the home. I want you to understand that that's the work. That's my passion. That's what gets me excited. It's waking, waking up every morning and trying to be the best man I could be in. Even in a dark time like this, still knowing I have purpose still not being shaken by the situation and the circumstances but rising and still some things I can't do but I can still be a priest I can still speak and I, and I can still have my words carry power look let me tell you something
people can say what they want to about us. But if we ever wake up to who we are and what we're capable of and how the world and universe literally will bend to us, game over. That's why they go out of their ways distracting us. That's why they go out of their ways feeding us bull craps and false narratives and everything else they can to mislead us. But at some point, hmm, we've got to wake up. With that being said, look, I'm going to get out. But I had to share that with you, look. Real, real easily. Let me, let me, let me, let me tell you. We need your support. We do. We need to be able to reach these little boys in every community across America because they are the future. Let me tell you, I've said this I don't know how many times. We will only get as high as our women can spiritually lift us and we will only get as far as our men will physically lead us. And while both play uh, crossing roads, that's the truth. So we need to be doing the work. On that note, I'm going to ask you to support us one more time, then I'm going to get off. And I'm going to thank you for letting me invade your space so often. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable evening.